Okay. So we're not even on the right screen. <laughs> Here we go. Practice exam number three. Real exam is day after tomorrow. All right, so how do you, first off, how do you graph a linear inequality? You can use your graphing calculator for any of this. When you use your graphing calculator, you would get y alone. Remember, because you've got to type in y1, you could do that, or you could just do it by hand. Either way is fine. If I'm going to take that little equation, maybe I get a fresh screen. 5x plus y less or equal to negative 1. So 5x plus y less or equal to negative 1. So here's question 1 on practice exam 3. So what do we do to graph? To graph... Yeah, y alone. First step is to get y alone. So I'm going to take that 5x and jump it to the other side. Remember, when anything goes to the other side, it switches signs, right? That becomes a negative 5x over there. So y is alone. Okay, so what, how do you graph now? You, um, where do you start? Where's your first dot? We just need two dots. Where's my first one? Yeah, it's right here. It's this number that's out there. And that's always in the middle. Right, that means down one in the middle. If it was positive one, it would be up one in the middle. Right, that that number out there is always right in the middle line. Positive is up, negative is down. So down one, there we go. Down at negative one. There's my first dot. How do I go to find my second dot? Yeah, put this over one, make it look like a fraction, and then it's rise over run, isn't it? Rise over run, make that number in front of x. It's a slope, look like a fraction. So you start from here now, starting from here, not from the origin anymore, but now from your first dot. You rise negative 5. How do you rise negatively? You go down. Huh. Go down 5. I'm going to go down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Down here at negative 6. And then over run 1. Did y'all see what I did there? So I shouldn't, that's not a dot right there. That's just, and then over. So there's, there's my line. So it's connect, connect the two dots. I got to do the shading still, but so far so good. So that makes sense. So first dot's at negative one, and then go down five over one. That's your second dot. And now the shading, what is it? How do you know which way the shading goes? Whatever it says right here, right at the end when y is alone. It says y less, doesn't it? Less. Y is on the narrow side of the symbol. Not the wide mouth side, but the narrow side. Y less. Where's lesser stuff? Above a line or below a line? Lesser is below. Now, do you know what below means here, though? The line is tilted a little bit this way, so below is this left side, isn't it? Is that good? So this is below. This is the shading. So whichever one looks like that, you can go back to the picture. Uh, looks like B, huh? There it is. We good? Next question. Stop me. Okay, so there's number 2. Minus 3x minus 5y less than or equal to 15. Number 2. It's the same thing. It get y alone, so I'm going to grab the 3x, bump it over. 3x plus 15. Uh, last step to get y alone, divide through by negative 5. When you divide, you have to divide all the way through. A common mistake is just to divide a couple of them instead of all of them. Everybody good with that? By that negative 5 all the way through, all three. Isn't the sign change? Good job. And when you divide by negative, that symbol needs to flip. Remember that? Flip the symbol when divide by negative. Yeah. So you got to turn the symbol the other way. So it's y greater than or equal to. Uh, and I put the negative. See this negative? I let them float to the top. You don't have to, but I think it'll be easier for you. The negative on the bottom of the fraction, I just put it on the top. And this positive over negative is negative 3. Do everybody see that? I, everybody understand that? That little stuff really matters and is the stuff that makes the difference between getting, getting the problems right and getting them wrong. The negative on the bottom there, remember a negative on a fraction, it doesn't matter where it is, top or bottom or front, but for convenience, I just put it on the top. It's easier to deal with. Okay, so let's graph the thing. So where do we start on our graph? We start it down three, huh? Two, three, right there. There's our first stop. And then where do we go from there? Yeah, rise over run, down three more. One, two, three, over five. One, two, three, four, five. Right there's my second dot, like that. Then I connect the dots like that, connect the dots, 
And which way is the shading going to go on this one? What does it say? Y greater. Greater. Greater stuff is above the line. So which of them looks like that? Let's go back. Looks like D, right? Easy enough? So easy for you? Okay, so um, let's try this one. So in both these, we've got to get y alone for both of them. Let me rewrite it. x plus 2y greater than 2. I'll just separate them. And uh, x minus 1 is less than or equal to 0. Okay, I'll just separate them into two of those. And then, so for each of these, you're going to have to get y alone. So let me just do this. Oops, I'm going to separate these. Okay, and then grab the x, jump it over, 2y greater than to minus x plus 2, right? When I jump that, positive x over becomes negative x, like that. Next, divide through by 2. So y greater than or equal to negative x over 2 plus 1. See, I always get y alone. Once you get y alone, you can just type in your graphing calculator, too. It won't show you the shading, though, so you have to do that yourself, but... Get y alone. And the other side, same thing. Grab that x, jump it over. Good to there. Plus 0 if you want. I mean, or you can just skip it since it's 0. Either way, whatever. Good so far. Is y alone there? Yeah, we still got, we got to finish getting y alone, don't we? How do we, how do we finish getting y alone? What do I got to do? Divide through by negative 1, huh? You just got to get rid of that negative sign. When I divide by a negative, flip the symbol. See that? Flip the symbol. So I get y greater than or equal to x plus 0. zero. 0 over negative 1 is still 0. 0 over anything is still just 0, isn't it? But here, two negatives make positive x, don't they? Good on all that? All right. Now, this is really 1 over 1. We need something there. We need a fraction there. 1 over 1 is 1. 1 times x is x, right? So you got to put that there. Okay. Let's go. It's graph time. So let's go to the graph. I'll do this one first. I'll do the red one first. So I start at up 1 right there. And then and then this is, I'm going to put a 1 up here because anytime there's a blank, put a 1. So, you, so this is rise over run, so I go down one, over two, for the red one. Connect the dots. Everybody see what I did there? So I started it up one, and went down one, over two. Connect the dots, make the red line. Okay, um, now let's do the uh, other one. Let's do this one. We start at zero, he starts at zero. That says start. And then this is rise over run. Up one over one, huh? Up one over one. Right there. Does that make sense on that one? You good? And now where's the shading go? Y greater, Y greater. It's above both lines. What's the region above both lines? Up here, isn't it? So that's above both lines. So there it is. Which one looks like that? Yeah, see. Good for the graph ones? Put them in your calculator too. Calculator, once you get Y alone anyway, you got to do that part by yourself. Once you get Y alone, you put them in your calculator. You know what I mean? You your Y1, Y2, put them in your calculator. Graph. I mean, it won't do the shading. You'll have to figure that out for yourself. So, but that might help. Okay. Okay, so number four. So, here's what we're going to graph. These two. We don't x, y, greater than zero. That just means first quadrant. We don't care about that. So, those are my two equations. So, I'm going to go to a fresh screen. 2x plus 4y greater than or equal to 12. This is number four. Two, I already forgot it. What was it? 2x plus 4y greater than or equal to 12. 2x plus 4y greater than or equal to 12. Other one is 2x plus y greater than or equal to 8. Okay, go back. So we got to graph those two, and then in the end, we'll plug into that thing they're saying minimize, huh? That'll be the last step. We save that for the end. Remember how these work? So we just do the subject two 
these guys, we graph them. Okay, so let's graph them. Same, same thing as usual, get y alone, grab the 2x, jump it over, 4y greater than or equal to minus 2x plus 12, divide by 4, y greater than or equal to, this is minus a half x, right, plus 3, just reduce that 2 fourths to be a half. Good. And I would just put this into your calculator. Y1 equals minus 1 divided by 2, x plus 3. Just put that into your calculator. Your graphing calculator. Let's do y2 now. y2 over here, grab the 2x, jump it over. That's minus 2x plus 8. He's done. Let that be y2. Put that into your calculator. And then, so let's do that. So you put that in your calculator. Put in y1, put in y2. I'm getting minus. Make sure you do the, n the negative button and not the subtract. Calculator gets all bent out of shape if you use the subtract instead of the negative or vice versa. It's very touchy. It's very sensitive. Um, okay, what window should you have? I would generally have the window 0 to 20 maybe, 0 to 20 or 10, whatever you want. But start at 0. So in other words, this would be your x min. Let's just do 10 maybe. 0, 10, 0, 10. What's that? 15, 15, 15 20, you can do 20, whatever you want. 15, 20, whatever works, whatever gets you a good view. This is x max, x max. This is y min, y max on your window. 0, 20, 0, 20. Hit, no, oh, whoops, I did the wrong one there. 20, hit the grip, <laughs> hit the graph button. Yeah, mine came out kind of small. Came out like here and here, like that. See something looking like that? Okay. Now, we, now, where's the shading? It's either going to be above both the lines, like up here, or it's going to be in below both lines. It's never in the middle. And, and what, what do they both say? Greater, greater. The shading is above both the lines, right? Good? So if it said less, it'd be below. It'd be, it'd be this section, wouldn't it? For less, it'd be that little inside thing. So greater. Okay, so what are my corners? Now I've got to find the corners. So what are the corners? This, this, and that. They're all the corners of what's called the feasible region, the shaded chunk. Everybody see that? This is all the shaded stuff. Good. So now we've got to find the coordinates of those three points. Everybody see how this works? Shading is greater. Find the coordinates of those three points. How do we find it? What's the coordinates here? Well, what, uh, what's important to know is um, which, what, what can you look? This, this is going to be a starting point. This is one, right, because this is the y-axis. This is one of the dots' starting points. This one starts at up 8. This one starts at up 3. So this must be up 3. This must be up 8, huh? See the two, the two starting dots right here? But here's an important. So this is over 0, up 8. Everybody see that? See how I found that? Right on. Look, remember these numbers off to the right? They're your starting dots. They're your starting. One of them starts at up 8. Whoops, one of them starts at up 3. Well, this is the higher one. This has got to be the 8, huh? But you need the X and the Y number. You've got to be clear on that. You can't be having troubles knowing, keeping those straight. It'll mess you all up. Remember that it's over 0, up 8, isn't it? It's not 8, 0, 0, 8. Huh? Good on that? Okay, how do I find this one in the middle? Hit the intersect button on your calculator. Remember how to do that? Go to second, calc, go down to intersect, and then just hit enter, enter, enter. You don't need to mess around with their questions. Here's what I'm getting, y'all. I'm getting 3.33, comma, 3.33, comma, uh, 1.33. With, with more threes, it goes on and on. There we go. And um, now, finally, for this intersection down here, how do we find the coordinates of that point? Notice that is on the y-axis, isn't it? So its second number is 0. It's y. Remember, it's always x, then y, 
x, then y, x, then y. So the y number is 0 there, the height. The height of this dot is 0. It's right on the axis. It's got no height. So you can just go to your table. Remember how to do that with your calculator? Hit second table. Hit second table. And go over now. Is that, is that y1 or y2? Well, it's coming from the line. It's this line here, which is a line that hits up at 3. So it's this one, the one that started at 3. See how I'm locating it? So it's y1, at least the way I entered it, y1. Am I going too fast? Are you catching all these little things, right? So I'm looking and saying, which line is this? It's the one that has a 3. That's y1. So go to my, when I hit second table, look at y1. Look at the y1. They'll have x and y1. And go down until you find a 0 for y1. And I see 6 next to it. Do you get that? And so I found it. So 6, 0. These ones are a lot of work. Save these for the end. These can take up a ton of your time, especially if you get stuck somewhere. These are huge time suckers, aren't they? Seriously, I would, uh, when you run into this problem, I would just put this one off because it could use up a lot of time. It's only one question, you know? Save it to the end. Do a good job on the other things. So 6, 0. This is, this is like the longest problem in the test probably is this thing where we've got to graph them, find the net, because now we've got to plug those in. So now I've got to come up here, and I've got to plug all those in and pick the minimum. We're trying to find the minimum, right? So now I'm trying to minimize what? Um, 6x plus 8y. 6x plus 8y. So we do the first one, 0, 8. Plug in 0. Plug in 8, right? This is x, y. And you get, what's that, 64. Then do the next one. 3.33, 1.33. Plug it into your calculator. I have no idea what you get. Anybody got that one? I'm getting 30. 30.62. And finally, the third one. I'm talking about 6, 0. 6, 0. So we get 6. Okay. I keep plugging into this. Everybody see what I'm doing? I'm plugging into that function. That's, that's the one they gave me right at the top up here. Everybody see it up here? What you're supposed to minimize. Minimize z equals 6x plus 8y. Everybody see that? So this is z equals. That's what I'm plugging into. So x and y. 6 times 6 plus 8 times y is 0. That's 36. So which one of those is minimum, lowest? 64, 30.6, or 36? 30.6. This one, this one. That's, that's the winner. Ding, ding, ding. We have a winner. 30.6. Let's go back. Which one of those is it? Oh. Yeah, you're going to have to check this. Divide this on your calculator. 92 divided by 3. I'm getting 30.66. 30.66, and this says 30.62. Is that the same thing? Yeah, we rounded. Remember? Don't you remember? We did that right back here. It wasn't really 33.33. It was threes forever, and I cut it. As soon as I do that, I'm changing the final answer. You realize? We did that. That's our fault. So it's good enough, though. I'm saying don't sweat it. That's it. Grab it. It's close enough because you rounded halfway through, so you're not going to get the exact answer. Do you see that? Now, if you want, I, you think, is there a way to get the right exact answer? There is, but it's painful. You would have to make this a fraction. What is this? What, think about money. What is $3.33? Isn't that three and a third dollars? That's what it is exactly, right. And what's $1.33? One and a third. So you would have had to plug in the actual fractions here and here, and you would have got that actual fraction. But who wants to deal with fractions? We don't want to deal with fractions. Just round, and I'm not going to try to trick you on the test on a question like this and go, aha, it's really 3.62. And you thought it was 30, aha. I, you know, it isn't like I have to try to make people miss math questions. I have to try to help them not to, right? I've not had a problem on the other end from day one as a math teacher, sadly, right? More people have missed more questions than I ever expected people would miss. So I am not in the business of trying to trick you. So if you get something that close, grab it. That's your baby. That's just because we rounded those numbers. So I'm not going to be... Don't worry about that kind of thing. That's close enough. That's it. That, I mean, 
That's it, because we rounded. That's exactly it, actually. It's okay? That makes sense? So know that on the exam. I'm not trying to trick you. Get something that close, that's it. That's because we rounded these numbers right here, so we got an answer close. Close enough, we can tell which one's right. right? Now, if it was way off, if, this, if our answer was 30.62 and this came out to be 57.9 or something, yeah, then don't grab it. You know, and then we'd, then we'd grab none of the above. You with me? That is the exact answer if you work out the fractions. They're exactly right. Ours is rounded. All right. We better... All right. So, well, can you read all that? Car repair shop blends oils from two suppliers. Supplier one, supplier most 49, blah, 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 blah. Okay. How many can be ordered from each? How much can be ordered from each to get at most 100 gallons of oil with maximum detergent? All right. What, what are we even doing here? How much can be ordered from each? Supplier one, supplier two. This is kind of a weird question, huh? Okay, so all we're supposed to do is figure out the setup. See how this is just practice on the setup right here? So um, what are we trying to maximize? We're trying to maximize detergent. Well, what's detergent? 3.8% and 3.1. So you're supposed to maximize those guys. Um, so you're trying to maximize 3.8% X plus 3.1% Y. So I'm getting that right here, right here. And so that move that is, remember percentages change to decimals, they go back two places. 0.038X plus 0.031Y. So which ones say that? B and D. So far we're down to B and D or none of the above. It's either B or D, right? A and C are out. Good so far? Now, which one is really right? Let's see why. What does it say? Um, at most, 100 gallons of oil. Um, I don't know. What? Let's see what it says. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, I didn't know. B's got it reversed. B's, so B's out. So it's either D or none of the above. Yeah, this, this has the 0 .038 first, then the 0 .031. B had them the other way. Yeah, thanks. I didn't look close. Okay, is the rest right? Let's see. X is between 0 and 49. It says, um, how much can be ordered from each to get at most 100 gallons of oil? 100 gallons of oil. Oh, that's this. That's X plus Y is 100. Yeah, that's X plus Y is lesser at most 100 gallons of oil. Um, oh, at most 49, yeah, that's at most, whoops, 49. And the other one is at most 69. Yeah, right? So that's right. D is right. Everybody see that? We'll move on. D it is. Okay. At least 27 tons. Okay. Blah, blah, blah. So um, how much grain should be used to minimize cost? Oh, this is a hard one, too. Yeah, these ones are hard. Yeah. Right. Okay. Let's go through it. So we got to set the whole thing up and solve it. So, all right. How much of each? Remember, you always want to find, oh, here it is, oats and corn, oats and corn, oats and corn. So what are our two variables? Oats and corn. Remember, always look at what your variables are first. That gets the ball rolling for you. So it's oats. So this will be the last really long, tedious one. Oats and corn. Remember, you put your variables across the top. That's my X and my Y. That's my X and my Y. Everybody good so far? So you look at what they're asking for, oats and corn, and you put those across the top sideways. And then down the side go the other things. What else do they talk about? Um, I don't know. They don't talk about much. <laughs> it's kind of a weird one. Okay, at least 27 tons of cereal. So X plus Y greater than or equal to 27. If you don't understand the greater than or equal to, don't worry about it. At least means greater than or equal to. But... The sign doesn't matter a lot. Um, so that's at least 27 of cereal, right? The cereal, see, cereal combines oats and corn, 27 tons of cereal. So 27 tons of X plus Y, oats plus corn. So I'm coming up with that. Next, for the best flavor, the amount of corn should be no more than twice oats. Amount of corn, Y No more than, less than or equal to, twice oats. That was weird. It went the other way. 
Yeah. Did you guys understand what I did there? Amount of corn, that's Y. No more. If something's not more, it's less or equal, isn't it? No more than, less or equal to, twice corn. Uh, twice oats. Twice oats. That's a weird one. Oats are 300. Uh, corn is 200. Minimize the cost. So we're minimizing. So I can write up here, minimizing the cost, the Z, which is 300 oats, 300X plus 200Y. So there we go. So there's our two that we have to put on the graph. We have to put those two on the graph. And we have to shade, find the corners, plug into the minimum thing. Do you all see how I came up with that? So that's just, there's no magic formula for that. That took chunks of my life, honestly. Hours and days and months and years of my life were poured into reading word problems and learning to write equations. I just want to be frank with you. No secrets with me. That's it. That it takes time. You got it. You got to spend time. You got to do lots and lots and lots of word problems. And pretty soon, it gets better and better. All right. So depending on how much you care, spend that amount of time, and you will learn. Um, okay. So now I got to graph both those things. So let's do it. Let's do the graphing. What if I'm going to run out of room? So I'm going to grab this x, move it over. Got to get y alone. Y is greater than or equal to negative x plus 27. The other one... Is, is nice, it's already, it's already there for us. It's already got y alone, huh? Y less than or equal to 2x. So, in fact, I'm going to go to fresh screen on that. Um, so, what do we got? Um, go back here. Y. Y is 6 plus 27. And the other one? Less than or equal to 2x. Okay. So there's my two. I've got to graph those. Oh, and we don't need, we just need a first quadrant kind of graph just like this, huh? All right, so, um, 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 um. where do we start? We start at up 27. I'm just going to go 27. Like, or just put them in your calculator, huh? Yeah, just type them in your calculator. Y1, Y2, just put them in there. What am I doing? Just put them in your calculator. So Y1, negative x plus 27, y2, 2x. Because this one goes to 27, I'm going to have to make my y max go up to 30, huh? So when you go to your window, make your y max go up to 30 and hit the graph button. I'm going to have my, my x max, it looks like it, uh, my x max is 20, that's fine. Here's what I'm seeing on mine. This goes off the screen. This one goes like that. That's what I'm getting. Getting that on your screen? You gotta make your, again, you gotta make your Y max 30. It's gotta be big enough to include that 27, huh? Everybody good with that? So there's the graph. Now, is the shading, well, it's kind of tricky, huh? It's, um, it's above one of them. It's, it's greater, it's greater than the line that hits up at 27. So it's greater than this line, and it's less than the other line, so it's below. So it's this section out here, isn't it? It's that section right there. You with me? Oh, so I'm going to have to, you know what, guys and gals, I'm going to have to let this go further and find out where this hits over here. So I would, I'm going to have to make my X max bigger. Go back, make your X max bigger. That's why these are a pain. You've got to keep adjusting your graph. X max, I don't know, make it 30. Go back to your window. Make your X max like 30, like your, like your Y max. See if that works. Yeah, I hit. Good. 30. So I made them both 30. Y max and X max are both 30 now. And I got a hit point because that's, um, that's a dot. And these are my two dots in my shaded region. This other region I don't leave shaded because it was not the overlap of the shading. Am I confusing you? You want where the two shadings overlap. It was above this line and below the second line. So the overlap is this region, right? Like good? And so you want the corners of the overlap shading region, this one and that one. You want those two points. So find that middle one with intersection. Second calc, intersect, enter, enter, enter. I'm getting 918. Did y'all get that? 
So this is the point 9, 18. Now the other point, this has got a height of 0, doesn't it? So go, go to the table. Hit second table. Second table. Find the one that has a y value. And that is, um, that's my y1. It's the one that hits up at 27. Find a y1 value of 0. Go to x, second table. Well, I hit the wrong button. Second table. Y1 of 0. Go down, 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 down. Twenty-seven. Twenty-seven zero. Did you find that? Hit second table. Twenty-seven zero. So there's my two corners. So I'm gonna get this out of the way here and plug in. I'm gonna wrap this problem up. These are taking forever. So what am I supposed to plug into? Three hundred x. There's what we're minimizing. Three hundred x plus two hundred y. So minimizing three hundred x plus two hundred y. So begin with plugging in 918, 300 times 9 plus 200 times 18, whatever that is. Plus 6300. And then the other one is this one, 27, 0. Times 27 plus 200 times 0. It's 8,100, isn't it? So which one's minimum? The lower one is the top one. That one. 9, 18, 6,300. Everybody see that? Let's go back. 918, 6,300. Is it not here? After all that? Are you kidding me? It's just cruel and unusual punishment. 9 and 18, 9 and 18, 9 and 18, yeah, it's not, I don't see that answer, it's none of the above, is that what it was? Mm. Yeah. yeah, troubling, that's a hard one, save that, save those two, save those two where you have to do the whole graph and everything, the other ones will be quicker, you'll see the simplex is typing the calculator, but the ones where you got to do the whole graph, those are long, those are long. You have to do those by graph. You can't do them by simplex, even though you have a calculator. Because I don't know if you, I don't know if I said this clearly. I, I didn't say it. Simplex, the program I gave you, the homework we did for simplex only works for maximizing problems, not minimizing. So these are minimum. Simplex won't do them. There is a whole different way of doing simplex for minimum. We didn't cover it. So you gotta have to graph these. You're gonna have to graph them and find your answer. Save these two. Save these two. There's a lot of words to these things. So part of the deal is going to be speed. Right? You, can't, you can't freeze up. You've got, to, you've got to just see it and know. See it and know. Anything that freezes you up, move on. Just come back to it later. So, all right. Look at all these words. This one looks terrible, but actually it's really predictable. Look what we're supposed to find. Bronze, silver, gold. Where do you put those? Right across the top. Bronze, silver, gold. Remember, you always put the... The variables across the top that we're looking at, the things, the answers they want across the top. Then, what do we do from there? What are the other characteristics? The bronze has 20 bags of regular. So, so what are we talking about? Regular, barbecue, and salty. So that must be down here. Regular, barbecue, and salty. Do you see how I knew to set that up? Again, the answers... Go across the top. Don't put those down the side. Answers go across the top. The other qualities down the side. And now we fill in the information. Bronze is 20 bags of regular, 10 bags of barbecue, and that's all. There's no salty, I guess. Silver, 20 regular, 10 barbecue, 10 salty. And gold is 30, 10, 10. 30, 10, 10. Good. This must be zero here. The profit, $30 on bronze, 40 on silver, 60 on gold. That's going to be what you're trying to maximize, right? Maximize profit. So you're maximizing profit, which is, again, 30x, 40y, 60z, xyz. Everybody good with that? This is 
x, y, z. So I did that. And then, what else we got left? 8,000 bags of regular. That goes over here. That's regular. 4,000 bags of Barbie, Q, and 2,000 bags of salty. See, I put those on the regular barbecue salty lines. See that? I don't, I don't need to put in less than, greater than, plus signs. You know, it's just going to all go in a matrix, right? We're going to throw it into a matrix and hit the simplex button. Now, good, I got all the numbers. See how that's really pretty quick, pretty predictable? I'm going to give you ones just like this, I promise, that are, well, I don't know if that's a happy, happy news or sadness. I mean, but it, they're just this predictable. I'm not going to throw you a big curveball. It's going to be just like this, just boom, 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 you know, just, just create the numbers. You know, these are the answers. Go across the top, other things down the side. Write them in, write them in, write them in, total, total, total. Maximize those. All right, let's throw it all into our matrix and then into our calculator. How do you do it? Start right here. This is the beginning of your matrix, isn't it? So let me, let me do that in the next problem, number seven, next page, big old matrix. And so you just start 20, 10, 0, 20, 10, 0, and then 20, 10, 10, 20, 10, 10, and then 30, 10, 10, 30, 10, 10. Now hold on, don't, don't put these in until the end. They're going to go way over on the right. You can put them way over on the right right now. 8,000, 4,000, 2,000, they're going to go way over here, aren't they? 8,000. 4,000, 2,000. These numbers go on the very right. What? And then where do these guys go? Yeah, they go to the other side, right? See how we have all the X, Y, Z left? Negative. That's why they become negative. They jump to the other side. Negative 30, negative 40, negative 60 on the bottom. Negative 30, negative 40, negative 60. The thing you're trying, the thing you're trying to maximize, so this is for linear pro, uh, simplex method. The thing you're trying to maximize those three, you see how they, we have all the X's, Y's, and Z's on the left? So these guys have to jump to the left. That's why they become negative in our matrix. Right? And when they jump to the left, you have negative 30X, negative 40Y, negative 60Z, and then you just have a zero on the right side, huh? Because they all left the right side. There's nothing more on the right side. That's a zero. So that's why we put a zero right here. See how that bottom equation is the profit one? Okay, now what do we do in the gap in the middle? So, yeah, which is ones down the diagonal, right? You just put a one here, zero straight below, and then zero one, and then zero zero one until you filled in all the way. Boom! See how I knew how many to go? Had to have ones all the way down the diagonal. Zeros filled in everywhere else. See how we do, always do that pattern? You fill in the gap with ones down the diagonal, zeros everywhere else. Those are the slack variables. Put that thing into your matrix A. Matrix A will be a what? 4 by 3, 4 by, six, 4 by 8. 4 by 8, and then hit the simplex button. Let's do it. 4 by 8, matrix. Whoops. What did I just hit? Something weird. I'm going too quick. Matrix A. 4 by 8. So enter them all. Okay, once you have it in there, you hit second quit, program simplex, go to it. Okay, now, on my first screen, it just showed a matrix without that. You've got to hit it again. You've got to keep it in enter until it says final matrix. Hit it again, final matrix. Hit two times for me. So you've got to get final matrix. I, I had to hit enter twice to get to final matrix. And over here, let me just write there. My final matrix. is this. I got 1 minus a half, 0, 1 20th, 0, 5, 0, 0, 1, 5, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 20, minus a half, 0, 3 halves. Go across here, what else we got here? Zero one zero zero 
minus 3 twentieths, 1 half, 1 tenth, 3 halves, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1. What, what just happened? Hmm. Well, that was wrong. This is 100, 1,215,000. There we go. There's the final matrix when I hit simplex and I hit enter twice. I got the final matrix. All right. So with all that said and done, what is the answer? How do you find the answer? Let's go back. Remember, it was X, then Y, then Z, wasn't it? So you got to keep that, that. This is X column, Y column, Z column. The rest of the stuff, who cares? It's just X, Y, Z, gold, uh, bronze, silver, gold. So now remember how it works? When there's a one with all zeros, you find where that one's in the top, shoot at the end, 100. So X is 100. Bronze is 100. Y, what's Y? Look at Y's column. What does that mean? Zero. zero. Remember, if it's anything other than all zeros and a one, it's just eggs. It's just zero. How about Z? He's got a one here. Shoot across, find out where that one is, 200. Z's 200. So they should do 100 of the first kind, 200 of the third kind. That's the best game plan. 100, zero, 200. Is that there? 100, 0, 200. C. 100, 0, 200. There we go. Simplex method. How are we doing? This is going to take so this is going to take some of your life like it took some of my life, right? If you want to learn these. These are, these are hard. There's a lot to these. You can do them, though. Practice them over and over again. All right, I better open. So, um, all right. So, same kind of thing. I'm just going to show you the... So you just got to set up the matrix. Remember, you just take these numbers, 1, 3, 1, 2, 1. Oh, wait, wait, no, not, I shouldn't have been grim. That, that's throwing me off. Scribble that out of the way. We don't care about that greater than zero stuff. It should just be 1, 3, 1, 3, 2, 1, 3, 2, 1, 1. Right, there's understood ones in front here. And then way over on the right, 175. Good so far? I'm just writing a simplex. See, it says use simplex. I don't want to graph them. Be a five-dimensional graph, three-dimensional graph, four-dimensional graph. Anyway, everybody see what I'm doing? Just writing down the coefficients. Now, what do you always do for the z? These jump to the other side. They all become negative. So it's going to be negative one, right? This is a one here. Negative 2, so 2 here, negative 4, and negative 6, like that. There we go, and then, and now, and there's always a 0 here. Now, what do you fill in the gap? 1's down the diagonal. 0's everywhere else. There's our matrix. Do the simplex thing, hit the buttons, get your answer. Maybe I'll do it quick. So put it in into A. It's a, what is it, 3 by 3, 4, 5, 7, 8. 3 by 8. It's a 3 by 8 matrix. Quit, program simplex, go to it, final matrix. I immediately got final matrix on the simplex, and here's what I got. I got minus 2, 3, 17, 1, 1, 4, 1, 2, 8, 0, 1, 0, um, 1, 0, 0. Negative one, one six, zero zero one, twenty five seventy five, uh, four fifty. Where's my answer? They want the maximum. Where's my answer? 
lower right corner. That's always the maximum. The lower right corner is uh, when you do simplex is always the maximum. 450 D it is. Funny on my screen there. Anyway, we all good? On that one, I'll move on. Notice number nine is just about uh, setting it up. Number nine is just about setting it up. It just says, um, write the initial tableau. Me and Joel were trying to do the whole thing and Destiny in my office before class. And then we all realized, oh, no, it just wants the setup. It just wants you to solve it. Just set it up. So which one of these is the right setup is all they're asking. So if you just take this. So notice I, I'm doing that in the sense that I don't want you to do the whole problem every time to be too long. I mean, this is long as it is, huh? So in some problems, it's just the setup or just the ending part. So this is one, three, two. Just grabbing these coefficients. The What's that? The bottom. It has to be negative. Oh, yeah. Well, C and D both have that, yeah. right? One, three, two, one, two, three, uh, the 20, 40, 60 goes over here. Yeah, the bottom, this is one and two, so negative one, negative two, zero there, right? Always, always zero on the bottom row at, at, right there. And then fill in the gap, diagonal ones, like that. Zero, 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 zero. Which one of those is right? See, what's the difference between C and D? They look awfully similar to me. Oh, the 40 and 20 or switch? That's tricky. All right, see it is. Good. That was great. Instead of the whole thing, I'm giving you the ending part. So this is, says, um, write the basic solution. Write the answer. Does that make sense? For the simplest, determined by setting non-basic variables equal to zero. Meaning, this one's going to be zero. And this one's going to be zero. Remember, any column, when you're done, that's, this is the answer. What they're saying on, when they say, so make note, if this is confusing for you, and you didn't know what to, and you thought maybe you had to type the whole thing in or something, then make a note in your 3 by 5 card. You get a 3 by 5 card for the exam on Thursday, right? You need to use that strategically. You would be unwise to show up with no 3 by 5 card or a foolish 3 by 5 card, one that isn't helpful to you. This is like a sporting event, right? You need to be fired up about this, right? And have a game plan. And on that 3 by 5 card, I would just write. When Mr. Heron says write the basic solution, that means, that means you know, don't do the problem. Just, just look at the answer, you know, if that's hard for you. So anyway, so that means x2, this one's 0, and this one's Remember, any of them that where the column is anything but all zeros and a 1, that means that variable is 0. Remember how we talked about that? So x2 and x5 are 0. So, um, so it's not C, because he has X51. It's not D, he has X51. It's not B, he has X51. They're out, just that quick. I haven't done anything else. It's either A or E. Is it A? Because X1 is right here, should be 9, right? X3 is where this one is, 18. See how I shoot across? It's X3. X4 is the 1, is 15, yeah. And Z. Z is always the lower right corner. That's the maximum. Always. 12. Yeah, it's A. Not good? That's a quick one if you know what you're doing. It's a long time on those simplex. Those are long and graphing and all that. All right. So here we are. Now we're doing these ones with the sets and the shading. And these aren't easy either. This is a tough test. These, these ones are hard. Uh, but you can do it. Just practice this. I promise it'll be just like this. I promise. This, this test is very similar to the real one. I mean, it's very similar. Same kind of questions. So um, how do we do this? So they want me to take set. Do you know how to read this? Where do you start? You start with the parentheses, don't you? Always start with the parentheses. A union C. So you've got to be clear on the difference between the U and the upside down U and know what they are. What is, so the U means either or. And the upside down means both and. It's got to be both, doesn't it? It's overlap. Remember that U turned over? It's overlap. It's got to be in both. Where U means unite. People in either group all come together and play softball or whatever. Right? Everybody good on that difference? So when they go A union C, that means everybody who's in A or, right? Either or. Either A or C. Either one. 
So who's in A? All these guys. Who's in C? All these guys. So what's that going to be? A or C is going to be Q, S. I'll just write down all of A first. Q, S, U, W, Y. That's all A. And now what can I add from C? V, W. We already got W. X, yeah. Y, already got Y. Z, yeah, add Z. Do you see what I did? I just took all of A. All of A. All of A was right here. And then I just added the ones from C that I didn't already have. So that's the group that's in either A or C, either one. Now, with that, we, they, they want me to take B, B, set B here, and overlap. So Q, S, Y, Z, that's B overlap overlap means you got to be in both you got to be in both so which letters are both in B and this A union C thing all of B Q S Y Z Q S Y Z all right Q's in both S is in both, Y is in both, Z is in both. Q, S, Y, Z. Q, is it none of the above? Yep. <laughs> That's disturbing. Q, S, Y, Z. It's in both. Are you good with the U? means unite, either or. You turned over, overlap. You've got to be in the overlapping. You've got to be in both, both and. All right, let's try so that, so here, let me write this up here, Q, S, Y, Z. Let's come down here now to 12. So C, I don't know if you can read that, C prime union A prime. What does the prime mark mean? No. Not. It means whatever's not in C and not in A united. Okay, so first off, what's not in C? Here's C. C is those letters. That, now, what is this U thing? What does it mean when they put you in the front? That's the, universe. That's the universe. That's everything possible in this problem. So everything possible in this problem is Q to the end of the alphabet. Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z, right? Everything possible in this problem. So I say, what's not in C? I look at C, and I say, okay, what is in the universe that's not in C? Well, C is V, W, X, Y, Z. It's V to the end. V to the end. So... It's everything before V. So the not C is Q, R, S, T, U. Because C begins at V. That's not C. Good so far? United with what's not in A. What's not in A? Well, here's A. Starts at Q, but it skips some. What, what is not? What's it missing? Q and S. So not A. This is not C here. Not in A is R. See, it goes Q, skips R, S, skips T, T, U, skips V, W, skips X, Y, and skips Z. Those are the ones not in A. How are we doing? I'm doing there. Those are the ones not in set A. Everybody see that? This is set A compared to the universe. That's what we mean. Right? Which, which letters are not in A, but they're in the universe? Those. Now, what are we supposed to do with these two groups? We're supposed to U them, unite them. The answer is anybody in either one. So, just put them all together. Just Plunk them all together. There we go. So, is that what it is? C? C is all those put together. Good. Let's take practice. Let's move. Okay. So, A, we're supposed to do A unite with B overlap C. Or is that C? Is that a prime on C? Oh, that's small. Yeah. Watch out, there's a prime on C. You all see that? So 
So prime on C like that, that's, that's tiny. Fine print there. Watch the fine print. So C prime. Okay, so that's B overlap with not C territory. Let's you start with the parentheses. We're starting there with the parentheses. Where does B overlap with not C territory? Well, hold on. We'll, we'll, we're going to go slow here. Here's circle C. Here's circle B. Just, just look at those two for a minute. Don't worry about anything else. Just look at circle B, circle C. Okay, in fact, let me change the color there. So we got B and C. So we want to know where does B... Right, there's four, there's this region, 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 this region. You know, there's a bunch of different regions. Which of those regions are in B and, remember this means and, both and. They're both, right, that, that you turned over. You should write that in your three by five card. This means both and. Both and. Scribbling today. Um, both, they're in B and... Both in B and not in C. Here and here. You see that? Those regions are both in B and not in C. Aren't they? Did you track with that? It's so easy to watch the math teacher do this. I experienced it. And then went home and thought I had it, tried it on my own and went, what did that teacher do? What was he or she thinking again? How did that question go? So you got to try this on your own. Don't, don't just watch me. I've had, a, not a million, I've had a lot of students over the years say, Mr. Heron, when you lecture, I just understand it perfectly. And then I take the test and I bomb. My word is always, that's a common experience. You, you, you're, you need to do homework. That's how you know whether you really know it or practice it. So don't, so this is how, what I just did. I applied some logic. I wish I had time to break it down more, but I just don't. I'm glad to help you come office hours, or, but make sure you can try it on your own. You know, try some of these in the homework on your own. So that's B and not C. Now let's put that together with what? A united. Now what's that symbol mean? Either or. So where's A? Well, A is this, 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 and this. Right? All those are A. So that's the answer. All those shaded things united together. Which answer is that? There it is on B. See that? See, it has shading, 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 shading. All right, I better move on. Those are hard. Okay, so how do we do 14? Um, do you realize... It's calling for a big Venn diagram. How do I know three circles? Dog, cat, parakeet. Three. You either got a dog or don't. You either got a parakeet or don't. Got a cat or don't. So I'll go dog, cat, and parakeet. There's three circles. Okay. Because there's three characteristics. All right, here we go. 99 had a dog. Does that mean I can put 99 right there in the dog circle? Yeah. No, that means all four of those regions together make 99. I can't do anything with that 99 right now. The whole dog circle adds up to 99. I have no idea what the different things are. Where should you really start? Usually at the bottom. Eight had a dog, a cat, a dog, and a parakeet. Where did that, where's that go? Very middle. Because that's, that's in all three, huh? That's the overlap of all three. They're, they're in the, those eight people are in the dog circle, they're in the cat circle, and they're in the parakeet circle, aren't they? Then work your way backwards. 98 had neither a dog nor a cat, and in addition did not have a parakeet. They had nothing. Where do they go? That's the outside. They're in no circles. That's where I wish I lived. No animals. I like animals. It's just not in my house. All right. 30, 34. 34 had a dog and a cat. My, my, my good friend, my wife just told me last night, so we're going to bed. She said, our good friends just bought an expensive puppy of some, oh, um, a poodle lab mix. Is that right? Labradoodle. That's it. You know those? Those are big bucks. They're awful cute. I think they're cute, too. 
for his daughter. My friend loves his daughter more than I love my kids, I think. And, uh, <laughs> and um, he bought it. We saw it a couple weeks ago. It's awful cute and everything. Well, tonight my wife said that the dog is peeing everywhere. I guess they got it too early from the mother. They should have left it a couple more weeks. And it's just peeing. Like, and they had to bring in carpet cleaners, like big bucks all over their house. You know, ugh, that's why I don't like animals in my house. I feel for my friend, and I do, ugh. Animals outside. All right, anyway, um, where are we going? I'm getting sidetracked here. 34 had a dog and a cat. Now, what can I do with that? 34, a dog and a cat. Do you realize these two together got to make the 34? Oh, no, I did the wrong two, huh? It's uh, <laughs> these two, huh? These two have to make the dog and the cat, right? Because that's the overlap of the dog and the cat circles, isn't it? Right? Do you all see that? Can I, can I help with that a little bit more? Maybe if I color code this. Here. Here's the dog circle. Right? Okay, let me do the cat circle a different color. Here's the cat circle. Oh, it's just all getting mixed around. Yeah, that's, I don't, that's all I got time for. See how, see how the, these two together are both dog and cat? So they're saying those two have to make 34. So if I take, this one's already 8. We already got 8 used up. Subtract that. What's that, 26. 26 there. See, those two make 34 now. That fits the fact that 34 had a dog and a cat. All right, 70, where are we at here? 76 had a cat. Ugh. I'm kind of stuck. What are we going to do? Anybody get this one? Yeah. Hmm, what are we going to do, what are we going to do? Had a dog, had a cat. You subtract that and you subtract 976 from 260 to find the variable. Well, the whole circle of variable. Had a dog, had a cat. So to find the cat, you subtract the 34 from the 76. I don't know. Wow. I should have worked this problem out beforehand. I just threw it on there, got it off the publisher's site, and assumed I could solve it. Um, I don't think that would work. I don't, I don't, I'm not sure what you're saying is right. Um, there's D. Okay, how can we get there? 260 families. So we got to do some of that 260. Yeah, but that's hard. 200, 260 families. Yeah, but there's a lot of circles remaining. This is hard. But... There's a lot of circles remaining, but you, you add up, and it comes out to like 239. Add up from what? Well, you add up all the circles that you have. Some people don't have dogs and parakeets, or cats and parakeets, and they have. All right. Yeah. yeah, it's not that simple, though. Well, um, I'll give it some thought. Um, we've only got three minutes left. Let me go on to the next problem. I'll finish it online. Uh, let's um, let's do one more. All right. Given contingency table gives the number and thousands of U.S. households classified by blah, 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 blah. Okay, whatever. What do they want? Find the number of households in the given set that do this. C union D intersect H. Okay, so remember, you start with the parentheses. C U. U means unite. Either or. Put them together. So where's that? Here's C. Here's all the C, and here's all the D. That's all the C, right? C and D. That's all the C and the D. I don't even want to read all those words. Who cares? La, 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 la. Who cares? Just jump right to the problem. C and D. That intersect, overlap with H. What's H? This is H. So where do they overlap? Here and here. Add those together. 3911 plus 18587. I believe it's like C. Is it C? Whatever your calculator tells you. See how easy that was? I didn't need to read all those words. Don't get hampered down by all those words. We have time for one more. Is that good there? Just the overlap of the... Yeah. I think it is. Now, how do I know as I read this? Blah, blah, blah. 170 households. 44 video. Snapshot. Binoculars. Video and snapshot. Snapshot. and blah. Three characteristics. Three products, right? So it's a big v Venn diagram again. Three circle... Venn diagram. Let me do the different colors this time. Hopefully I'll be able to get this one. Okay. 
And um, what are they telling me about them? Five have all three. So five right in the middle. What is this? This is um, 40 video camera. Video snapshot. Snapshot and binoculars. Okay. So five have all three. Start You start at the end. Five have all three. Eight have a snapshot and binoculars. Eight have a snapshot and binoculars. That must mean three there. Because that gives me eight total in the snapshot and binocular over that circle. Is that okay? Am I going too quick? I just want to finish this before I let you go. Um, right, see so I did that. I'm wor- I started at the five, working my way backwards. Eight have a snapshot and binoculars. So eight, I put a three here to make eight total in the snapshot and binocular circle. Right? Now nine have video and snapshot. Nine have video and snapshot. That's these two. Me, must be nine, video and snapshot, so that must be four. Nine, video and snapshot. See, that's the overlap of those two circles? Keep going. 51 have binoculars. Oh, I can't do that because there's two, two missing. I'm not going to struggle again, am I? Uh, have binoculars. And 40 have snapshot. Oh, yeah, I can do that. 40 have snapshot. I'm only missing this one. So I can do that. 40, take away 4, take away 5, take away 3. What is that? A12, 28? Is that 28? Did I do that right? Yeah. Yeah, 28 there to make 40 total in the snapshot. So I did that one. That's good. 44 have video camera. I can't do that. This is hard again. What am I going to do? 170 household surveyed. This is another bad one. These are hard. I didn't know they were quite this hard. Um, but do you want to have binoculars? Well, certainly I won't give you anything harder than was on the homework. These are a little bit harder than the homework, huh? We don't have any quite this bad. Well, I'm not going to do any good sitting here looking at the screen. So let me... Okay, well, there's a change in plan now. I am going to remove this number 16... And I'm going to change the problem. That one's just too difficult. It's not a good problem. So there will not be one like it on the real exam. It would be much easier. Let me show you what the one on the real exam will be like. So here's the new number 16. So here's the new number 16. Okay. We're talking about coffee makers. And um, 6% have either a faulty switch or a defective cord right away. That speaks of a two-circle Venn diagram because we're talking about two characteristics. Either have a faulty switch, faulty switch, or a defective cord. I'll come back to the 6% thing in a minute. Let's go on to this 2.6% have a faulty switch. We still can't do that one either. Let's move ahead. 0.8% have both. So that goes in the middle, 0.8%. goes in the middle, they have both. Now, 2.6 have a faulty switch. So this part here, plus the 0.8, whatever this is, must make um, 2.6. So if I take 2.6 and I subtract 0.8, I get 1.8, right? Yeah, 1.8. So that means this part here must be 1.8%. Because together, 1.8 and 0.8 make the 2.6 that are in the faulty switch circle, you see. So now, can we back up to the 6% fact? 6% have either a faulty switch or defective cord. So it's here, here, and here. Those three sections must add up to 6%. Because they're either faulty or defective. They're in one of those two circles. So I have those two sections. I just need this one other section. So 1.8 and 0.8 makes 2.6. Subtract that from 6.0 because these three together must make 6%. Subtract that. And what do you get? 5 put a 4, put a 1, 4, 3.4. 
So this must be 3.4%. So that those three together now add up to be the 6% that either have a faulty switch or defective cord. They're in one of the two circles. Okay, so where does that leave us? Well, if we add up all those in the inside now, we can find the outside. If we add up 1.8, the 0.8, and the 3.4, what are you going to get? 16, 20... Uh, oh, yeah, 6%. So this must be 94% that are out here. Because, yeah, I didn't even need to do that, did I? 6%, that's what all those th those three total. So 94% out there. Maybe I should just read what their question is. What's their question? What is the probability that a coffee maker will have a defective cord? Defective cord? Defective cord is the whole defective cord circle. So I just need to add up the defective cord circle, which is... 0.8 and 3.4. What's that? 4.2? 4 4.2%. B. There it is. Right? Because the question was coffee maker will have a defective cord. Defective cord is the whole defective cord circle, which is one was 0.8 and 3.4 added up 4.2%. There we go. All right, let's go back now and do number 14. So now I'm going to go back because there's a new number 14. The earlier 14 that we had, this earlier number 14 right here, forget about this. I'm going to cross this out. This is too difficult. There will not be one like it on the real exam. I've got a new number 14. Let's go do it. Okay, so here's number 14. Uh, again, uh, we're talking about okay, market researcher collecting data on 100 households. 81 have cable TV, 65 have high-speed internet, 56 have both. It's another two-circle Venn diagram. The two characteristics, they have cable, they have the high-speed internet. Okay. Now it says, start with the bottom fact, right? 56 have both. 56 are in the both circle. 65 are in the internet circle. So that means this plus this, those two together, which make the whole internet circle, must be 65. So 65 minus 56, was that 9? Yeah, must be 9 there. And then 81 have cable, so that means this and this must make 81. So 81 minus 56, 8 plus 7 plus 1, what's that? 5, 25? 25 here, so there's 81 total in the cable circle. All right, and then 100 total. So if I add up all these numbers and subtract from 100, I get the outside, don't I? So if I go over here and I add up 25, 56, and 9, what's that? 15, 20, or 90. So there must be 10 out here to make 100 total. That makes sense. These three add up to 90. There's 100 total, so it must be 10 out here. What's their question? How many have neither cable TV nor high speed? It's the 10. It's the ones out there. It's answer D. So that's how the, how the questions will be on the real exam. That's the new number 14 and 16. That's how it'll be on the real exam. All right, let's go forward and try number 15. Actually, I just remembered we did number 15 back here, didn't we? Yeah, here we are. Here's, here's the word for number 15, totals part C. Yeah, because C union D. Yeah, we did it. Okay, let's go forward then. And now we're doing number 17. The die is rolled twice. What's the probability of the total of the two numbers is at least six? Well, that, that has to come. So here's number 17. We've got to have that big old chart, which you need to have on your 3 by 5 card like this. Oops, what am I doing? I'm getting my chart off. One, two, three, four. <laughs> it's kind of a wonky chart. Okay, let me do it a little bit better here. All right, so one, 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 two, one, three, one, four, one, five, one, six. I'm just going to list out the 36 different things that can happen when you roll two dice. So you want to have this already on your 3 by 5 cards. You don't have to waste time making it in the middle of the test. OK. 
Okay, so this is two dice rolling two dice. That's the 36 boxes. Now, what's, what's the actual question they have for me? They're saying uh, numbers, the, the total is at least six. Okay, total's at least six. Total's at least six. Well, here's this. These are all total of six. Total equals six. These are all total equals seven. Notice. Remember, they go down the diagonals. The same total is down a diagonal. Total is eight. Total is nine. Total is ten. Total is eleven. Total is twelve. So at least six means six or more. So there they all are. Now, how many of those, out of the 36 different squares, <clears throat> how many squares do we have there? One, two, here, let me go a different color here. One, two, three, four, five boxes there. So five boxes here. Six boxes down the main dial. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then five boxes here. One, two, three, four, five boxes. And then four boxes down this diagonal, three boxes here, two and one. So add all those up, you get the total number of boxes. Um, what do you get? 11, 26 boxes out of 36 boxes. 26 boxes out of 36 boxes total that have um, six or more on the dice. Reduce that, divide by two. Top and bottom, 13 eighteenths. That's the probability. Where's that? 13 eighteenths, B. All right, let's do number 18 now. So is that good? There we go. Let's really figure that out. So number 18, we're going to um, flip a coin three times. Remember how that one works? That's, that's the tree. Head, tail for the first flip. Heads, this is the first flip. Head or tail. Head or tail for the second flip, and then head or this is the third flip, head or tail, head or tail, head or tail, head or tail for the third flip. So putting it all together, you know, we will put the results here. This is head, head, head. When you go this way, head, head, head. And this is head, head, tail. If you go head, Whoops, head, head, tail. And this next one is going to be head, tail, head, etc. You just write them all down, all the different results. Head, tail, tail. Tail, head, head. Tail, head, tail. And this is tail, tail, head. And finally, tail, tail, tail. Okay. So all those results, what do we got here? Probably getting at least one head. Well, if you want at least one head... At least one head? That just means any of these. The only one that doesn't have at least, these are all at least one head, aren't they? So that's seven out of the eight different results. Boom. B. There we go. On we go to number 19. Okay, number 19. College students were given three choices of pizza, blah, blah, blah. All right. Probably, okay, what does this say right here? Remember what this line means right there? It means given. I mean, not, not get it in the way too much. It means given. So they're saying, what's the probability that they their favorite is meat given, given, given means what you know, they're a junior. So as we're given, they're a junior. We know they're a junior. We, we picked a person at random. They are a junior. We're given. We're, we're told, hey, the person they picked is a junior. That means it's out of that group. Forget about everybody else. It's one of those juniors. So if it's out of that group, what's the chance it's meat? Well, the meat lovers are 13 over whatever the total is. 13 out of whatever these add up to be total. What is that? Um, 12, 14, 1, 3, 4. Is it 64? 30, 42, 42, 42, yeah, 64. 13 out of 64. So if we divide that on your calculator, 13 divided by 64, we get 0 0.203. 0 0.203, answer A. There it is, 0 0.203, approximately, rounded to the nearest 
hundredth. Actually, that's rounded to the thousandth, isn't it? That whatever. Good, good enough. There we go. So again, given always limits the denominator, doesn't it? You're given there a junior. It's only out of these juniors it limits the denominator. Let's go to the last one, number 20. Okay, number 20. Basketball player hits her shot 46% of the time, four shots, probably that she misses the first, hits the last three. Basically, this is a tree. How do I know this is a tree and not a Venn diagram or something? Well, because it's action after action after action. She shoots once. Makes it or misses, shoots again, hits or misses, shoots again. You know, it's action after action after, after action. Just like the flipping the coin three times. Action after action after action. So that's a tree. So so she, um, let's see, she takes first shot. What is probably that she misses and hits? So she misses or hits, and then she misses or hits the second. This is the first shot. The second shot, and then she misses or hits, misses or hits, misses or hits. I'm running out of room here. Misses or hits. The third shot, and then there's a fourth shot. Misses or hits, etc. I'm running. What what are we looking for in particular? Um, she misses the first, hits the last three. Let's find just that row. So misses the first, hits, hits. Hits right here. Misses, hits, hits, hits. That's what they're asking me for. What's the chance of that? Well, um, she hits 46% of the time. So hits. So the point forty six is always the H. What's the miss then? If she hits the shot 46% of the time, then subtract from 100. Subtract from 1.0 decimal. 54% of the time she must miss. So the chance of miss, hit, hit, hit. Let me bring it down here. Miss, hit, hit, hit. That's what they're asking. Misses her first shot, hits her last three. That would be uh, miss, miss is 0 .54, 0 .54. Hit, hit is 0 .46. So 0 .46, 0 .46, 0 .46. Those would all be multiplied together because in a tree, as we go miss, hit, hit, hit for this last one, it's a, you always multiply as you go from left to right. So multiply those together. Let's see what we get. 0.54 times 0.46, times 0.46, times 0.46. I'm getting 0 0.052525 2, 5, 6. How far do they want me to go? And then move it two places to change it to a percentage. 5.256%. Did I go two places? 5.25. So it's not, not there. It's none of the above. It's E on number 20. So there we go. That's the practice exam.